is going on today guys welcome back to the channel and today's video where we're going to be getting into our very first weld so for a while now i've really wanted a welder um not that i really need a welder but it just seems that it's inevitable for the frs that at some point it's going to need some custom parts and uh, i know as soon as i do get an oil cooler that is going to be the case the oem bash bar which i've removed and now we have a nice big juicy front crash bar uh, that used to be the mounting place for virtually any oil cooler kit that's out there for the car so unfortunately or kind of fortunately it's going to lead us to having to make our own stuff, our own brackets, our own mounting solutions and stuff like that. That probably does involve some metal work, um, unless I want to make it out of PVC pipe or something like that, which I just, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. But anyways, this is going to be a completely off the cuff video. These are going to be my first welds. This is my first welder and we're going to break into that now. Everything that I did get for the uh, initial project of just having some fun and sticking something together. So let's get into it. Now prepare to witness some really dorky stuff if you are an experienced welder, because uh, you know I just hit the shopping cart and I just started spamming things. Uh, but the first thing I see here is uh, what could be a gimmick, or we'll find out if it is or not, but some sleeves uh, for your arms for welding. Then we also got some leather gloves. Uh, we are gonna be welding flux core today. So we have a chipping hammer, also uh, wire cutters or just the welding shears, I guess you would call that. We have a couple of magnets to start off with to help us with angles, some extra flux core for some extra fun. Of course, they're gonna sucker me into more stuff, I believe. And lastly here, I believe a welding helmet that feels so light it doesn't even make sense. Probably because it's so cheap. But I did opt for uh, an adjustable auto darkening helmet. So we'll see how that works out today. I obviously have no experience in any of this. So it's not like my opinion matters. But I just wanted something to get started with. And I think that's the theme that you're gonna see here with this welder. It's definitely not the best. I don't think it's the worst out there probably. But it's something to start with and it was easy to pull the trigger on. And I think that's the biggest thing sometimes is to just get started. So we ended up getting the, uh, what is it? Blue Demon uh, 140 welder. This is 125, so it just it fits your, I don't know what the term is, but it uses regular house outlets, you know, don't have to have the uh, upgraded two, 240 plug-in or anything like that. So it's a very, very normal machine. So let's see real quick what this welder comes with. Uh, the ground clamp here. Uh, the, the torch or the uh, uh, the stick welding little gun thing. That's a pretty cool feature about this one. It's a uh, wire feed as well as can do stick welding. I don't think that's the right term. Looks like we got a couple extra tips in here. Always nice, I would think. And we gotta see if it comes with any wire. I don't know if it does. And obviously, right away it comes with the gas nozzle. But today we'll be doing flux, so I might go without it or uh, just install a rubber sleeve, which I got from Harbor Freight, which we gotta see if that even works. So that is pretty much everything I got. I think I just need to see if this comes with wire. No, it doesn't at all. So that's interesting. So considering this is just a walkthrough video and I am not the one who should be teaching you how to set all this up, uh, go ahead and check out weld.com's YouTube channel where I've learned so much about welding and metalworking in general, including setting up a, uh, a machine such as this one. So go ahead and check out the video above if you want to see how I did figure out how to set it up. Uh, 
All right, guys, we are all ready to weld at this point. And uh, I must admit, I don't have the best uh, shirt or jacket, uh, but luckily it's raining. So if I do catch myself on fire, I can just run right outside. All right, so we're online here and we're in sync mode, which the wire feed actually dictates everything else. So if we wanted to have low voltage here, we would go down all the way. And in this case, we want 14 volts and uh, what is it? 2.7 wire speed. I don't know how the 2.7 relates because this is like not on that scale. Uh, but what we're gonna do is get as close to 14 volts as possible. So we're gonna go all the way down on wire speed. And then over here, you can go down to and up to in terms of volts. So we'll just go down to 14. We'll just try that out and just see what happens. <laughs> Obviously, I have no idea what's gonna happen here, so. Holy shit, that's crazy. So this shit is so thin that actually, yeah. So I was right to go all the way down. I think. Maybe I should just try attack first. I think that would be uh, important to learn as a baseline. I don't know if that would stick anything together, but... I mean, I don't think working with uh, very thin metal is doing me any favors here. But, I mean, I think I'm doing something. That was like a, a bead. So let's try something over here and try just do a long one. That doesn't look too bad. I'm okay with that for a first weld. It's a little bit boogerish. I think I'm moving around too much. Honestly, I don't think I need to move that much. I think I just need to go slow and steady and then it'll be a decent weld. Metal's getting super hot though, so I might, I might give this a second to cool down. Yeah, like I said, a little bit boogerish, and I think you can kind of see where I'm like moving around a lot. Over here, I think was pretty good because getting kind of thick and kind of letting it build up. But then, like I said, having this really thin metal, probably not the best decision. Pretty freaking cool. All right, guys, we're gonna do one more little pass right here. And then uh, from there, we're going to try to stick something together. Super soft on the end there.
Hey, I stuck something to something. It's kind of cool. I totally missed it on this one. Like, some of them I can't see very well as I'm going through it. I'm missing it so much. I was doing okay and then I uh, pulled away from the joint. All right, let's hit this other side, see if we can do it a little better. So much better. I just held on it a little more, pushed into the joint a little more. I still think I'm missing it a little bit here. moving around way too much, but uh, I think this is actually gonna be somewhat successful of a weld. Somewhat, yeah, it's gonna look like garbage, but. Now let's take a look at what we got here. Let me find my first weld, then I'll kind of go in order. And oh my Lord, it is still pretty hot. So this is my first one. As you can see, I kind of started in the crevice and then I worked my way out of it. I just jumped out of it all of a sudden. Once again, that was part of me not being able to see if you could hear from the audio. Then on the second one, Kind of the same deal, kind of came away from the edge again, but much better beginning here. So can't complain there. Then the third one, I think I started to understand how much more metal I could put down, like I could go slower. So that's where the welds are becoming much thicker. And then in the middle, I definitely hiccuped a little bit, so that's unfortunate. But then the last one here, I'm really freaking proud of. I mean, it's an easy weld along the seam line there, but I'm just really happy with that. I think that turned out really, really good. I think I'm gonna keep this around as a nice little art piece maybe. But uh, let's do a quick little strength test on this before we wrap this up. Super scientific strength test here. Uh, you take your BFH, clamp the sucker down. Hey. It better than I thought. I thought it was gonna snap right off. Oh, it broke the clamp. That's how solid. That's how solid my welds are, man. It fucking broke the clamp. My God. Let's try it from the other side. I think I'm gonna stop the test here. But hell yeah, dude. <laughs> this is so cool. This weld, though, I'm so happy about that. Like even the spatter and stuff, it like, it's not that bad. Like this is just abhorrent, but this one, woo. All right guys, we are all set here with our trial run of the Blue Demon Welder, the 140, I believe MSI. I'll put the exact title up here, but 
Uh, it's pretty good experience overall for my first time welding. I'm really, really happy with this uh, end result on this one good one we had. And I'm just happy to see, you know, a little bit of progress. It's just cool to see. So I know this is a very, very small project for now, but this will uh, lead up to hopefully bigger, bigger things as we uh, start making pieces that we need for the FRS. So we're not just gonna jump into a bunch of welding videos from here. We are still gonna drive our absolute nuts off, uh, but this is something I've always wanted to learn and I'm glad we could kinda get some of those learning curve things out of the way right away and just learn how to set up the machine, get it welding, etc. So it's been really good. And as far as I can tell, the welder seems to do its job all right. Um, admittedly, I kind of wish I would have gone up in uh, quality, I guess you could say, just to make sure that I don't have like plastic mechanisms because everything is plastic inside. And when I feel it, I'm like, yeah, that could easily break. So I'm just gonna have to be careful with it and just treat it right. It should be fine. Other than that, I really like the display. I think the auto settings work pretty well. Like even a dummy like me kind of figured out what I was doing. And some of the mistakes I believe initially, like the blowout and stuff, I think that was me being like way too close. So a lot of this could have been just technique and not necessarily the settings were wrong because this weld to me is pretty beautiful and we really didn't change the settings much past what they were, you know, right out of the box for the recommendation. So overall, pretty stoked. And now I am like not really fearing the idea of an oil cooler as much as I was prior because I was kind of a little skeptical about getting one because I'm like, well, how am I going to put it somewhere? Because every video I've seen in every package kit, oil cooler kit I've seen for our car mounts it on the bash bar, as I said prior and our OEM bash bar is somewhere in the corner now. So I'm pretty stoked to move forward to that next step now to get an oil cooler. So you guys will probably see that relatively soon, but that's gonna be it for this one. Really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe for more content like this, and I will catch you on the next one.